When HMD resurrected Nokia in 2018, the company's first lineup wowed us. Nokia's lower-end options have been good choices for buyers on a restricted budget since then. Unfortunately, the Nokia G10 $149.99 does not generate the same level of enthusiasm as the Nokia C5 ND $169.95 from last year. The G10 boasts excellent battery life, a generous software upgrade policy, and a gorgeous display for its price. But it's let down by its low processor, limited storage, and a cheaply manufactured and breakable body. The G10 will get you through the day if you can't afford to spend more than $150. But if you can spare another $20, the Motorola Moto G Play 2021 $169.99 is a significantly better budget phone choice. Durability is in question. The Nokia G10 comes in two colors, blue and purple. With little difference between the two, our test device was purple but it seemed blue in various lights. It's the right size for an extended commute measuring 6.5 by 3.0 by 0.4 inches and weighing 6.4 ounces. The back plate and chassis of the phone are made of plastic. The phone's back has a textured matte finish that repels fingerprints and provides a pleasant grip. The plastic itself has a thin feel to it. A round camera module is centered at the top of the back plate. The Nokia logo is carved prominently in the center of the back panel. On the counter, there is a phone. In bright light, the Nokia G10's purple model takes on a blue color. The top edge has a headphone jack, while the bottom edge has a USB-C charging connector and the speaker grill. A Google Assistant button and a dual SIM micro SD slot are located on the left side. A power button with an embedded fingerprint sensor as well as a volume rocker are located on the right side. Although the hybrid fingerprint sensor is slow, it is precise. The front of the phone is dominated by a 6.5-inch LCD with a teardrop notch for the camera. Except for a little Nokia emblem on the bottom side, the bezels are minimal. The display is sharp despite the low resolution of 1600 by 720 pixels to 69 ppi pixel density. The displayed colors are chilly as they are on all of the Nokia phones we've evaluated, and the screen isn't bright enough to use in direct sunshine. The phone is splash-proof and features a reinforced glass display according to a Nokia spokesman. The phone comes with a screen protector and a jelly case, but neither will help prevent the screen from cracking if you drop it face down on the street. The plastic body, on the other hand, should be able to tolerate minor drops without too much damage. Customers of Verizon are not required to apply. The Nokia G10 is compatible with AT&T and T-Mobile 4G LTE networks, but not with Verizon's. Overall, band support is decent. However, Band 71, which is critical for T-Rural Mobile's users, is missing. Using a Cricket SIM, we tested the phone on AT&T's LTE network in Chicago and saw average speeds of 6.4 Mbps down and 4.1 Mbps up. The call quality is excellent. The earpiece level reaches a maximum of 84 dB, which is loud enough to be heard on a packed train. On all of our test calls, the noise cancellation functioned well. The audio quality of the bottom firing speaker is poor. The sound is brassy, with a mids push to the front and significant high-frequency distortion. The speaker is loud enough to fill a room with a peak level of 88 dB. Wi-Fi Dual Band and Bluetooth 5.0 are both supported. Although NFC isn't included, it's unusual to find a $150 phone with that capability. Scrolling is sluggish. The G10 is equipped with a 3GB RAM MediaTek Helio G25 mobile platform. There's 32GB of storage available out of the box with around 23GB usable. A micro SD card can be used to add up to 512GB of external storage. For the G10, even simple things are difficult. When opening an app or going through Twitter, there is obvious slowness. The camera app is quite sluggish, taking several seconds to switch between front and back cameras. Although 3GB of RAM is the absolute least we recommend in 2021, the Moto G Play runs substantially better with the same storage and RAM capacity. 
Gaming was a terrible waste of time. Every time we tried to open Genshin Impact, it crashed. Alto's Odyssey worked, however, there were several frame skips and even a few app crashes throughout our time with it. The G10's 5050 mAh battery is a bright spot. Nokia promises that it will last 3 days between charges, which may be true if you don't use your phone much. On our battery drain test, the G10 lasted 16 hours and 8 minutes while streaming video over Wi-Fi at full brightness. While it doesn't quite match the Moto G Power's 18 hours and 42 minutes of battery life, it's more than enough to get you through a day between charges. Selfies that will make you feel uncomfortable The G10's camera performance is yet another flaw. A 13MP primary sensor, a 2MP depth sensor, and a 2MP macro lens are all housed in the rear stack. The G10's primary sensor performs admirably in bright light. Color accuracy and clarity were perfect in our test images taken in the basic camera mode. The depth of field was a little on the shallow side. We noted some loss of sharpness around the corners when we switched to wide-angle mode, but the photographs were fine for social media posting. Things start to go apart in dim light. The photographs in the test were flat and muddy, with a lot of blooming. The foreground subjects were indistinct and the photographs were strewn with noise. The macro lens is predictably inadequate. Our test photographs were flat and smeared with a lot of fringing and blurring. With enough light, selfie cameras usually perform well, but the G10's 8MP sensor falls short. Our images were sharp and had a good depth of field, however, there was noise around the edges. Despite having a flawless complexion, our subject looked to have imperfections on their skin. The low-light test images were a murky mess with unnatural blurring in the foreground due to over-aggressive noise suppression, a simple operating system that is frequently upgraded. The G10 comes with a stock version of Android 11. The unlocked version has no bloatware, and HMD doesn't even pre-install productivity apps. Using a budget phone without continuous notifications is an uncommon and refreshing experience. The G10 is one of the few Android One devices available in the United States. That means you'll get two years of timely OS upgrades as well as an extra year of security fixes. Getting it wrong the Nokia G10's brilliant display, outstanding battery life, and multi-year OS upgrades might have been enough to make its sluggish processor, limited storage, and subpar build quality acceptable a year ago. However, the budget phone market has altered dramatically in the last year, and the G10 is falling behind. The Moto G Play is only $20 more than the G10, but it outperforms it in every way, with better build quality, a longer battery life, and a more powerful mobile CPU. If you have a bit of extra money to invest, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G $279.99 is a good option. It boasts a lot more powerful chipset, better cameras, and even 5G connectivity. It looks beautiful, is more sturdy, and has a considerably more powerful chipset. There's no room for a phone that cuts as many corners as the G10 on the market, especially with phones like the A32 5G. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel in order to support us. We will be posting every now and then, so make sure you have your notifications bell icon pressed on so you get to know the minute we post another video. That was all for today. See you soon with another video.